I think a lot of us have grown up with uh, Britain getting the flack, especially when it comes to the weather. Um, you know, we like to moan about it, saying, oh, you know, we don't get a summer. We don't get, you know, the warm weather like we do on the continent. But the thing about it is that we're kind of lucky and maybe even kind of extremely fortunate, in fact, uh, in comparison to other countries of similar latitudes. So I wanted to talk about how Britain is actually a kind of miracle story when it comes to um, our northerly position in the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, specifically, I want to talk about how the country of the United Kingdom is incredibly mild and is one of the perfect places to actually grow a lot of temperate plants and uh, even like kind of subtropical plants uh, with some examples in some uh, sort of microclimate areas of the United Kingdom. And... I think to start this off, we have to talk about the trade winds and uh, the ocean currents because they're basically the reason the UK isn't a giant ice cube uh, throughout most of winter. And uh, it's a common knowledge that most of the UK's weather is influenced by the Gulf Stream, which is a massive ocean current that brings warm water all the way from the Gulf of Mexico up towards Europe. It's like a personal space here in a way. And it keeps things relatively warm, even though we're way up around 50 to <coughs> 60 degrees latitude, pardon me. Compare that to places, as I said, of similar latitude, which is like Newfoundland in Canada or Moscow in Russia, which are at similar latitudes, but get way colder winters, not even a comparison. And, uh, you know, no Gulf Stream for them. Under the trade winds. And you have the prevailing westerlies, which bring in the classic moist mild there that the UK commonly experiences throughout uh, much of the year from the Atlantic Ocean and that's the classic British weather which is you know one minute it's raining the other minute it's cracking the flag sunshine and it's what ultimately gives the UK its lush green landscapes especially in the west so places like Wales and uh, western Scotland and that is actually due to uh, the geography and the landscape of um these areas since obviously you've got the highlands of scotland you got the mountain ranges of uh of wales and i won't go too much into that right now maybe that's for a later day but it's not just about winds and uh ocean currents i'd like to talk a little bit as i said about the geography and the geology of uh the united kingdom that has helped uh facilitate facilitate the microclimate that or the many multitudes of microclimates we have in these isles as I said, for example, the western side of the United Kingdom is much, much wetter than the east. You've got comparable rainfall in the southeast to Madrid. Uh, you know, 550, 650 millimetres of rain a year. Uh, just like Madrid. Uh, the only difference there is that the United Kingdom as, as a whole gets its rain pretty much throughout the year. Whereas a place like Madrid gets its rain predominantly through winter uh, and the autumnal months. But anyway, the west is much uh, wetter than uh the, the east and as i said this is because of those mountains in places uh like wales and scotland which act as uh, essentially barriers when the moist air from the atlantic hits these highlands it rises cools and dumps rain uh which leaves the east well the east coast of england the east of Eng uh, the united kingdom relatively dry in comparison so that's why norfolk and east anglia can be so different and feel so much sunnier than the west and the northwest specifically so Within the UK, you have many microclimates. Um, you've got local climates that can vary really widely from one region to another. And a great example of this is the south of England, uh, especially a place close to my heart, um, Cornwall, which has a mild oceanic climate where palm trees can grow. Uh, not only that, a lot of subtropical species of plants can more than tolerate it here and, and it thrive in this clime. Even places... Uh, Western Scotland, it's like you've teleported to a different region of the planet. You can find Cordyline Australis, which is, uh, you know, associated with uh, New Zealand uh, flora in one of the most, probably one of the most northerly uh, climes on the planet in which you can get away with growing exotic themed plants. Britain's relatively warm climate, given, well, the northern latitudes, is really quite unusual. And it's one of the... I wouldn't necessarily say the rarest, but it's a more uncommon climate type, which is the temperate maritime climate, which is only ha uh, found in a handful of places across the, gro uh, the globe. And as I say, at around 51 to 59 degrees north, uh, with the latitudes 
known for really harsh cold winters like Canada and Russia, the UK rarely has any such extreme. For instance, London's winter temperature on the low side of things hovers around 5 degrees Celsius, but in comparison to places like Moscow at a similar latitude, it's on average minus 10 degrees Celsius. And obviously, as I've spoken about, the Mormon effect is largely due to the North Atlantic drift, uh, the extension of the Gulf Stream. So this madness has made Britain surprisingly fertile, which has allowed plants to thrive um, earlier in the season and grow uh, faster uh, in comparison to colder regions. Uh, a good example of this is the rhododendron, which have native to regions like the Himalayas, um, not at the top, but more so towards the base, which uh, grow really quite abundantly in British gardens, and arguably they grow faster uh, than their native habitat, something that wouldn't be possible in harsher climates. And the UK is also one of the leading countries in terms of garden plants, and ornamental horticulture, which is mostly thanks to the year-round moderate conditions, which creates an exceptionally long growing season. So historically, Britain's mild weather has been a crucial advantage. And because of the absence of extreme cold or sweltering heat, like you can get in other parts of the world, uh, it's made survival easier. So especially in pre-modern times, when weather could dictate the fate of civilizations, a stable climate has allowed agriculture to flourish. Having such a mild climate is kind of rare globally. While many countries face seasonal extremes, the UK enjoys mostly a consistent climate without many droughts, heat waves or freezing conditions. This has not only shaped the British landscape, but it's also shaped the people, uh, enabling resilience and productivity without the constant challenges of climatic extremes. A good example of you know the wire the the mild weather conditions in the uk is this this my garden it's 53 degrees north uh liverpool in northern england you have washingtonia robustas trachycarpus virginiae you have psychus revolutas euphorbias musabajus and acari heterophilias you've got all this in quite a small space and quite far north in the world you've got cord lines bougainvilleas granted some protection but Overall, you can see, like, that's an exotic effect, and a lot of this is not protected at all throughout the year. Quite stunning, really, that you could get away with this, this far north. I mean, a lot of this is apparent in the UK's plant hardiness zone map, which actually goes from 10B to 6B, and a hardiness mo zone map, for people who don't know, is the lowest average temperature that that region sees in winter. But you have zone 10B, which is found in the mildest parts of uh, the UK, and that's in the Isles of Scilly and parts of the extreme southwest, like coastal Cornwall, maybe possibly even the Isle of Wight. These areas experience really mild winters and see a minimum temperature of around 1.7 degrees Celsius, so they don't even see a frost on average. Uh, you have Zone 9, which covers much of southern uh, England and Wales and lots of places in London. You have Zone 7 and 8, which is found across the Midlands and Northern England, where the winters are cooler, but still quite mild compared to other regions of similar latitudes, like we spoke about. And then the coldest zone uh, in uh, the UK is 6B, which is found in the Scottish Highlands and some exposed inland areas. Uh, and these areas can receive lows of t minus 20.5. But again, these are mountainous areas or exceptionally exposed depressions in the landscape. And the wide range of hardness zones from 10B to 6B demonstrates the UK's climatic diversity, despite kind of being a relatively small size. A big island, but geographically speaking, a small size. And uh, the lack of extreme cold over much of the country, ever since the Ice Age, allows for a wide variety of plant species to flourish. And, you know, it's kind of helped the UK be known for its rich gardens and diverse plant life. And this leads me to, I guess, my finally, final sum summary of uh, why the UK, uh, the UK really has quite an underrated weather, uh, underrated uh, climatic system. And I think it's because it's mostly room temperature throughout the year. And we are so comfortable in this environment that any deviation from this, kind of, we feel it. So who knows what the future will bring, whether, you know, future colder winters, maybe hotter summers. We just know there's probably going to be some climatic difference, obviously, as the world changes. But yeah, it's a nice way of looking at things, and I guess it puts it in perspective how fortunate we are to call these isles our home and be grateful for it. And that's what's co made me cope throughout the last summer we've just had, because it was a particularly 
abysmal summer. Thank you very much for watching.